to the Kent Lap Podcast. There is a lot of time and effort. There's an art around writing a novel. Yeah. Doing this creative work that someone can read, and it's not nonfiction. It is fiction. It's a story. This yeah. came out of someone's brain. This, would, this came out of Julian Vaca's mind. What's the, what do you say is the value of that in society? Ooh. You know what I mean? Like, there is a value there. There is no doubt about it. Someone's going to be on the podcast soon. Um, I can't think of his name. He's local here, and he's really accomplished ad writer. I'm super excited to have him That's on. That's awesome. And um, he says, in his, one of the things he sent over is that um, he thinks that more business people and entrepreneurs should read more fiction than nonfiction. And, uh, that was, that was interesting. As so, a fiction writer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, <laughs> I endorse that. There's a place in society for sure. What is that place? Is it mere amusement? Is it mere passing people's time? Is it, you get to read, you know, for an hour or two in the evening instead of watching TV and there's just some kind of a, an amusement value there. Um, but I feel like it might be more than that. I wonder if it kind of ties into how like we're kind of caught up in a grand narrative. Yeah. This comes back to faith a little bit. Yeah. And then stories play on that and that helps salve our soul or whatever. You know, I mean, I don't know. What do you think the place of like a novel like that is in society? I mean, for me, as I'm reading, going through novels, you know, and, and consuming writers who I adore and who, who, you know, um, who I look up to, I think for me, the value is in the inspiration from the works, from their novels, and how it informs how I am as a creator, as a, you know, as an employee, as a, you know, as a, as a human being. Um, when, whenever I come to the end of, of a novel, I just feel accomplished and inspired and, frankly, refreshed. Mm. And because... Reading requires a level of investment. Let's just say it that binging a Netflix show or watching a movie or listening to you know a, an album on Spotify or Apple Music does not. Mm -hmm. It requires an investment of your time. It requires a level of discipline to mm -hmm. sit down, crack open your book, and read it. Especially in an age where so many things are vying for our attention, social media, you know, video games, VR. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of things that are just, you know, just fighting for our, our energy and our attention. So to sit down and read something, read a, read a novel and get to the end, there's definitely a level of accomplishment that comes with that. You, um, you know, you just, I, I know for me, I can only speak for myself. I feel refreshed, rejuvenated and inspired to go and create my own things. Yeah. Um, so I would say that, that that's one piece of it, but then the other piece of it as a Christian, um, even though I try not to be overt with this, there's definitely allegory and, and themes that are baked into my stories that hopefully inspire discussion and challenge readers. So you'll get to the end of a story, hopefully that I've written and you're faced with, you know, some questions about hopefully what you think thought or think you believed about a certain thing that has now challenged you at the end. So I would say the other piece is hopefully it challenges readers to, yeah. um, to think, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to be thinkers. And, um, so I, yeah, that, that's kind of my response to that. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I think that, um, there's something about reading a good book. Now I don't read a ton of fiction, but, um, but reading a good story, fiction, uh, it triggers sort of a, like, it almost feels like the good ones kind of call you to a higher, pull you to a higher calling, you know, like they're like pulling you up to be a better person, to live a grander life yourself, you know, to be more alive, more present, more, I guess, live a more fulfilled life yourself, like live your own story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, and everyone, everyone's story is different. Everyone has a different story to live, but there's something about reading a good fiction, a good story, yes. whether it's real or fiction, that is like, it's inspirational. Yes. So that's a big, that's a big, 
that's a big deal to be able to do that, you know, for a few, a few people, at least in society. Yeah. In some small way through a fiction. I mean, that's a, well, that's a, that's a, that's a noble undertaking. I'll piggyback off of that and, and just quickly bring it back to the workforce. I think creative writing also, um, in, empowers and, and enables, um, you know, people with certain tools that they otherwise, you know, wouldn't necessarily have. So for example, my nine to five is working in marketing, uh, for a music licensing company here in Nashville, Soundstripe. And, um, so I'm, I'm their social media marketer. Uh, you know, I, I help with copywriting and, but, but creative writing has helped sharpen those marketing skills mm-hmm. because all marketing is good storytelling is, yeah. is being able to, to, you know, you know, uh, tell a good story. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Donald Miller is, is all about this right now. Um, and so I think creative writing, you know, um, can really help inform and sharpen certain tools that are applicable yes. to many different types of, yeah. you know, workforces. I totally agree. <laughs>